I'm sure you've heard at least one horror story with a coding bootcamp. Today, I'm gonna to share five ways coding bootcamps are lying to you and you should be aware of. Number one, job placement rates. You might have heard controversy in the coding bootcamp industry around coding bootcamps advertising a really high job placement rate and that turning out to not be so true. You might have heard students complaining about it. You might have even heard lawsuits brought up against specific coding bootcamps about it. It definitely has stirred trust in the industry and for good reason. Very often, coding bootcamps will advertise the highest percentages that will most likely get you to convert to sign up into their program. So if you see 90%, 100% job placement, that's awesome. I wanna to go to that program because there's a 90 to 100% chance of getting a job after graduating and all these other coding boot camps, I'm seeing 50%, 60%, 70% within three months, within six months. That sounds really good. And then you don't see any external links to show that that data is being audited. You don't even see any internal links or extra information to show, well, what students were actually included in this data and what students were excluded. Did students that struggled through the curriculum because maybe it was poorly designed or they had instructor turnover, did they get excluded because they didn't graduate on time? Are there other reasons why they were excluded that might be relevant and might inflate the data that shows this enormous success that you're going to have? Now, if you want me to dive deeper into that, we can talk about how some of the numbers are fudged, are manipulated to make the coding bootcamp look good. That is a longer conversation. But you want to look for that criteria. You want to find out what made up that data. Um, and most coding boot camps don't actually have their data audited from what I've seen with any standard body. They, for example, the coding bootcamp industry has gotten a lot of distrust in potentially even little support, especially with government funding because there is no standardization. And I think the closest that we really have is sir.org. They promise audits. Um, currently, from what I've seen with their website, I believe they do audits at the end of the year. So even if you're looking at 2020 data, you might not actually see audited data until the end of 2021 for that previous year. Now, please correct me if I'm wrong, but you know that's kind of alarming because you want to look at most recent data for um, something that's supposed to be the closest to a standard coding boot camps have to making sure that their data is completely accurate, but it's something a lot of students don't trust and for a good reason. So be careful about the job placement rates, ask for that inclusion and exclusion criteria and really dig into that. Because if you're gonna be investing thousands, tens of thousands of dollars into something that mostly promises you a job that can be very, very attractive and can also often under deliver. Number two, job guarantees. This is a fun one that I've talked about quite a bit. And the devil is in the details like all of this, but more specifically the contract that you sign, the criteria that often is kind of pushed away into legalese that students usually don't have a transparent window into. They don't really have a good understanding of what's actually going to exclude them from that guarantee, what's going to void that job guarantee. And, you know, sometimes it's just students not reading contracts, but it's also on the coding bootcamp to highlight this legalese that have been drafted by this attorney that students can't often translate. Um, and, you know, a few of the ways that I see job guarantees really get people is 
the job guarantee will trigger at a very low salary. So let's give you an example. If you graduate from a coding bootcamp, six months goes by, you are running low on money, you didn't realize that that high job placement rate um, wasn't as accurate as you thought it was. So you have to go back to your old industry and you accept your position. You know, maybe it's $30,000. It's not a lot, but it's paying the bills at least. There are job guarantees that will be voided and it, it basically you're telling the coding bootcamp, I did get a job. You didn't get a coding job, but in the contract, it doesn't say you have to get a developer position, even a tech position sometimes. And so I've even had guests come on to my podcast sharing that um, it was in the contract that even if you went to this software engineering school and you got a design position, a UX position that triggers the job guarantee, even if that's the only thing that you could find that finally puts food on the table that you've been so desperate for, oh well. <laughs> You signed the contract. And so you really need to be careful about some of the terms in there. And e sometimes you'll even get minimum salaries, like 40,000. 40,000 is a pretty common number for that job guarantee. A lot of these coding boot camps are based in big cities where if you were making 40,000, for example, in Chicago, good luck. I hope you're single. I hope you're not married. Um, or at least I hope you don't have children. $40,000 in a large city is not that much to go off of. And, you know, sometimes they even have stipulations that you need to be applying for a certain percentage of jobs in this large city where you think, okay, I'm going to sign up for this remote program and my area, $40,000 isn't that bad. So worst case scenario, I don't have to pay till I get a job with $40,000. And oh, lo and behold, in your contract, you have to apply for a lot of positions in the large city where that coding bootcamp is established. And if you get that offer for $40,000 in that big city that now requires you to move out there, Oh, well, you signed the contract. So be very careful with the job guarantee. Make sure it very clearly defines what, um, what specific position you actually need to get. Make sure you fully understand the criteria that you have to do weekly to keep up with that job guarantee, because if you slack, job guarantee is voided. They don't owe you anything and you owe them everything all of a sudden, even if you potentially don't get a position because you didn't keep up with your weekly duties. So job guarantees are another big advertisement. They get a lot of students. A lot of students get screwed over. A lot of legalese in the contract. You can find like pages and pages, like half a dozen, even up to a dozen pages just around that job guarantee most students aren't going to be able to read that and fully understand that. And I've even had students that have tried to reach out to coding bootcamp staff. Sometimes they're helpful. Very often times, um, you might even be talking to, you know, admissions or staff members that don't fully understand that legalese that an attorney came up with. Um, a lot of students don't ask about these kind of questions and they need to. Number three, career and hiring day. What's more attractive than signing up for a coding bootcamp that promises a job fair, that promises you are going to be interviewed by real companies that want you to work for them? I've had coding bootcamps that straight up just said, nope, we're not doing that this year. I'm sorry. And I'm not even joking about that. That actually happened. You signed the contract, they got away with it. So uh, other, like, I think most coding boot camps try to keep up with it. I find that a lot of coding boot camps struggle to get quality employers that are actually hiring and not only actually hiring, but actually hiring junior developers. So let's dig into that a little bit. A lot of, I'm going to give an example of um, Full Stack Academy, the hiring day that I went through. 
I remember, it was actually not my cohort, I don't believe. It was, because um, I, I have a few friends from Full Stack Academy, and one shared that they talked to the employers, and the employers just flat out said that they were only there for the fellows, for the teaching assistants, and they prioritized those teaching assistants. Now, that might be true, that might be false. Um, I definitely trust this person's opinion. They've always been honest. But very like this is a common thing across many coding boot camps where, of course, they're going to try to hire the best engineer, the most qualified engineer. There are fellows, there are teaching assistants that usually know more than those initial students going through the program the first time. Of course, they're going to prioritize the fellows. Of course, they're going to prioritize people with more experience. And so here you are, you signed up for a coding boot camp with no prior experience. And for some reason, those hiring managers aren't calling you back. And I've heard stories of coding boot camps now starting to shift their advertisement, their marketing to saying, well, it's just a practice interview round. We are giving you real experience to be interviewed and get feedback by these real companies. When they initially advertised, these are real, companies that want to hire you. And so a lot of marketing as coding boot camps start slipping up on the hiring days, a lot of marketing starts shifting. And in my opinion, it's to try to, they're realizing that a lot of people are speaking up and frustrated with this. I don't think hiring days produce a lot of values for coding boot camps. I never have. The most value that's going to come is from you being a hire or a hireable software engineer. And if you just rely on the coding boot camp connecting you with employers, you are so much more valuable than that. And I think you're going to be extremely disappointed with that experience. Now, some coding boot camps do a good job of maintaining relationships and connections with companies in the local area. If you're remote, that gets a little bit tougher as a lot of coding boot camps have offered more remote options and they're opening up to a wide array of students. Hiring days have gone down in quality across many coding boot camps. Do not go to a coding boot camp just based on them offering this career fair, this hiring day. Number four, salary fluffing. You might have heard coding boot camps advertising. When you graduate, you are going to get a six figure position. Don't worry about how many of our graduates are getting six figure positions. Just just trust us. Or when you graduate, you can be qualified for a senior position. Many of our graduates become senior developers. That's how good we are. Don't worry about which students become the senior developers. Just trust us. Very often when you see these high numbers and high positions advertised, they are usually based on students having prior professional developer experience, having gone to, had a computer science degree in the past, had gone uh, to a different coding bootcamp before they went to this coding bootcamp. They've had that education, they've had that experience to be a little bit more qualified for these high paying positions or higher titles. And many coding boot camps, and I'm sure you've seen this, they advertise these, like you are going to get that. You could be one of the students that is a top earner that you know gets these elite positions. And if you are a student with little to no experience, that probably isn't gonna happen to you. And if you sign up to a coding boot camp expecting that and agreeing to the price often with these kind of coding boot camps, tens of thousands, over $20,000 potentially, you're agreeing to that price with that promise because that is a big promise. Like I don't just want to become a junior developer and potentially only make like 50, 60,000. I want to make six figures. Like I know I'm going to the right coding boot camp because they advertise that. Be very careful. You are probably not going to be one of those students. Them advertising that and treating you like you are is a lie. And they get away with it all too 
often. You have to dig into the data. Ask these questions. What students, what are their backgrounds? What did they actually do throughout the coding boot camp? Did they um, become a fellow? Did they get an internship position afterwards? Um, like, what did they actually do to get this salary? You really have to dig into those backgrounds. And of course, usually a lot of that data isn't accessible. But these students are getting it so they can advertise it. Number five, where did all of these five star reviews come from? Have you been to Course Report in the last few months? Have you been to other websites that highlight honest and transparent reviews for coding boot camps? In my opinion, with certain websites, there are partnerships and there are biases that will affect what coding boot camps are prioritized and featured. That is a whole other discussion. But where I find a lot of these reviews being so, they represent the coding bootcamp so inaccurately, isn't really because of these websites that are listing reviews, not so much. It's more the coding boot camps and how they convince students to leave a review. So I'm gonna share something that was shared with me about how a leader of a coding boot camp got people to review that person's coding boot camp. So, you know, at the end of the, uh, towards the end of the curriculum, there was an option, um, could have been listed as a requirement to review the program. And if you have, like, if you had a positive experience, you were taken to an external link like Course Report or another website to leave your review. Please share it. We want to be transparent. And if you had a negative review, oh no, we want to hear about it. So we're going to provide an internal link. And I want you, this data can remain anonymous. I want you to tell me what we can do better. You probably see the problem with that. That person that had a negative experience leaves that review internally. It's never shared externally. Have you heard of coding boot camps or rumors about how they really push for positive reviews? That is one way that they do it. Be careful of this new flood of positive reviews. Leaders are getting very clever on how they convince students to leave them. In my opinion, what I suggest people do, scrap all the five star reviews, scrap all the one star, look at the two star, the three star, the four star reviews. Look at the reviews that give pros and cons. Look at the reviews that are willing to share their unbiased experience that isn't incredibly emotional like you would get with one and five star reviews and allow them to kind of share their journey with you and share their frustrations. Usually you're gonna find that in between the one and five star. There's no real way of filtering out all of these student reviews that were manipulated into being left and these bad reviews were completely excluded. Um, there's not a real way to, you know, all of a sudden find these reviews that are only internal. But I want you to be aware of it because it does happen. And this is hardly the only way that students are manipulated into only leaving positive reviews for coding boot camps. Be very careful of the reviews that you trust. That was five ways coding boot camps lied to you. Unfortunately, there are many other ways. If you want me to go into more detail about anything that I described, or you want me to expand on the rest of my list, I'm happy to do so. Let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching.